Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about paint shader shaders. And paint shaders or paint brushes in Java is a little bit uh, strange and it's a it's a topic that you really don't come across if you don't need it. But in my case I had some implementation at work where we used a lot of different paint shaders and I wanted to dig uh, more into it and figure out how they really worked in order to make my job easier. So I thought while I'm in, in it and learning myself, I perhaps can share some of that learn, uh, learned information to you. So let's switch over to my screen here. And first off, we have this little buffered image up here. It's a uh, 500 times 500 uh, image, an RGB, and I have it over here. It's a PNG, and I get a graphics object of that uh, image. So I can use this graphics 2D object in order to draw things on the screen. And I want to set my background to white so I can draw white things. And a bit further down here, I have something that I can fill a rectangle with. So if we draw this, it will draw something from 100 to 300 inside of this 500 square. So you get a little bit of a square down here uh, with some paint in it. And it's just a full white uh, square. And you can set a clipping area. And I have a little function here that creates a star. And if we run that, you will get a star shape within your, um, when you draw this. And, and a clip area is just something that you, you create some path. In this case, I draw a path and you can see it like you move your cursor to somewhere and then you draw a line to somewhere else and then a line to somewhere else and when you're done the path will close itself back to where you started and then i can create a shape from that by running a create transport shape and in this case i say that i want to translate this shape uh, 100 times 100 pixels i will move it a little bit if i remove a little bit of this and say 40 instead the star will be moved in the direction where from where you start your drawing because if you start your drawing in the top left i want it to be more within the squares i do a translate of it so i will move it uh, over so there's a lot of math in uh, in there so i usually see if it looks correct <laughs> then i have translated enough and you can do rotates and you can do a lot of different things on, on this next up we have the paint. So let's say that I have a gradient paint here and it starts at 100 pixels in a cyan color and then goes down to 300 pixels. So it starts up left and goes down right. And if we add that and still draw the same, you will see that you get a gradient shader from the top and down to uh, and if we remove our star here, we'll see it in the square shape. So you can see where it starts and where it ends up. Uh, so that, that's one thing you can do here. Um, if we do the next one here, where I can have a radian, uh, radial gradient paint. And that is something that will start from the middle and then do something in a specific radius. But this is a little bit interesting because you can say that I will start in the middle of the painting. 250, 250, and I want a radius of 300. Nothing strange there. But I can actually say that I want from the beginning, in the inner point, to 20% uh, out from the circle, so dot zero two. Uh, the next part will be the last 80% of the circle. And I can say that the first part should be red and then it should move over to cyan and it should end up in green so this will also make an interesting shading because you can say how much of the shading should be red how much of the shading should be cyan and then where should it end up in green so that's an interesting way to do shadings in a radial way uh, next up i have a liner paint gradient here 
and it's very similar to the first one we had, the gradient paint. It's the same way that you say I want to start at some position, in this case 100, 100, and then go to 300, 300. So we have the same here. And I can say, as we did with the radial paint, how much of it should be in the different sections. Uh, and I go red, uh, say on the green, as I did before. And I wanted to repeat if I end up going longer than uh, my distance. I want it to be a liner uh, RGB. And now I can also give it transform. In this case, I give it a rotate. So I will rotate it 20 degrees. So that means I will see it starting up in one in the upper hand corner, rotated a bit and then going down and then it will repeat with the same colors. So this can also create interesting effects. Last one of the normal built in that I want to show you is the texture paint. And in this case, I will load an image and then I will say that I want to draw this image and each of the images within my paint should be start at zero, zero, and they should be 200 wide and uh, 120 high. So it's just to get some perspective of the image so it doesn't really skew too much. And if I draw that, you will see that I have textured my area with this image over and over again. Uh, and it starts up in the upper right and goes down. Uh, so it will paint over the whole section, uh, but you will only see it in a specific part of the image here. So those were the things that we wanted to go into in order to learn how to paint things. If we remove this, uh, because it's uh, too much black in there, and we can also look into how to draw text. So I can draw this text down here and I say that I want the foreground color of black, I want to use Verdana font, I want the font to be plain so not bold or uh, italic and I want size 50, I have a stroke width of 5 and then I draw this out. So the stroke width is how heavy the font should be and the size is up there. So you see here I can type some text and whatever you do in this image if you have a clipping area it will clip to that area and you will just see the things that are drawn within this area the last part and was I actually wanted to figure out is how does these paints actually work how, how can I build my own and how can I look into one and understand it so I made my own paint here, so we can add my custom paint here. And if I run that, you will see that I will get the text of exploring, but I will get a lot of static noise as well. So we'll start with static noise and this text upon it. If we go into the custom paint here, we can look at it. When you have a custom paint, you can say how transparent is this paint? Uh, can I draw something uh, on the paint or uh, will the paint be visible through it or should I, is it opaque? In this case I created a opaque image. And then I can create a context here. These are the things that I need to implement on the paint interface. So it will return a custom paint context and I know how large the device is that I draw on, so I can make some assumption on how large the paint I need to create is, and also the user bounds, so I know how much I can work within, if the specific paint is transformed in any way, I can get those hints, and also what color model is expected of me. But I, I will choose my own color model, so I just will create a custom paint down here. And if we look at that, uh, I start to actually create an image up here, because I wanted the same color model for both the image that I create and the raster. So I create an image up here, I set the color model to that image, so that's an RGB, and I will return that color model. Might be an easier way to do that, to get an RGB color model, but I didn't find that. And then I create a raster here, and this is the actual drawing. So if I put something in here, it's what will be used within my 
paintbrush when I paint. So in this case, I create some uh, graphics image here. And then this is something that I learned as well. There is something called a thread local random that you can create for the current thread to get a random that is for this specific thread. It's still a semi-random function, so it will give you pretty much the same result every time if you don't see it and so on. So it's not perfect, but at least you get something random and you get some more functionality to this one, which I think is interesting. So I run through the image I want to create because we get how large the paint we want to create. It's decided by the, um, the API here. And then I will draw that full raster with some colors here that are totally random. But in this case, you can say where the origin will be and where the bound will be, which is so nice because you don't need to have all that math where you get a random number and then you need to multiply it with something and then do some modulus in order to get it in this specific range. Here I can just say give min int from 0 to 255 which is much simpler and then I can draw a rect here and I actually draw uh, something that is 5 by 5 so I draw a little bit larger pixels so I get a little bit more interesting image and then I will just return that data that will be used in my paint. So this is how these paints actually work. So in a gradial paint, you get some information about what colors you would need to use. And then you have some function that decides how the raster should look in order to get the desired effect. So they aren't really that complicated. The math behind them can be a little bit hard to look into, but the interface is pretty easy to use. So this was what I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something. I actually got some a lot, lot more knowledge about how these things works. So I have an easier time uh, in my workplace to actually use these. I hope that you liked this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section. Or if you want to, Tell me about the specific use case that you have used this paint tool or these drawing functions for that is interesting. I would love to hear about that in the comment section as well. And I really hope to see you in the next video.